Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the small buffer optimization, and more specifically, how that's used in the short or small string optimization for std string. So let's go ahead and open up this SSO.CPP uh, program. And what we're doing here is we're going to track the dynamic allocations by std string. So to do that, we'll go ahead and overload the new operator. So anytime a dynamic allocation occurs, it will go ahead and print out allocating some number of bytes before returning malloc of that requested size. Then inside of our main function, we're just going to print out the size of the string object. Um, and then we'll go ahead and create a whole bunch of strings um, of different sizes. So from size zero up to size 31, and we'll print out, you know, how many characters, you know, of that are, are in that string as well as the address. So basically where those characters are currently being stored. So let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's compile it first with GCC. And we'll call our benchmark or little program SSO. And let's go ahead and run it. And you might see something surprising here. So we see that our string object being stored on the stack is 32 bytes. And then we see that, you know, for characters, you know, zero all the way up to having 15 characters inside of our string, we don't actually see a dynamic allocation. And in fact, if we go ahead and look at you know, this address here, it's a fairly high address that we'd expect um, from something being stored on the stack. And then down here, once we have a size string of 16 or greater, here we start seeing dynamic allocations occur. So this is from our overloaded new operator. So for size 16 uh, strings and greater, we get dynamic allocations for each of these. And our address where the string is being stored is significantly different as well. It's a lot lower, kind of what we'd expect from something being stored on the heap. Um, okay, so this is what's known as the small buffer optimization, or in this case, uh, more specifically, the short string or small string optimization. So inside of our string object, um, inside of GCC, we typically have um, we've got a pointer to the data, we've got a size, a capacity, these are our members that we have, and then we have some extra space at the end. So basically, you know, the capacity and that extra space in the end, that gets treated as a small buffer. So instead of doing a dynamic allocation, we're just storing the string inside of the string object on the stack, right? And this is incredibly useful because it means that for small strings, we never have to do a dynamic allocation. We can just keep it on the stack. So it's also important to know that um, you know, this implementation or this, um, this optimization isn't necessarily implemented the same way for different compilers or different versions of the C++ standard library. So let's go ahead and get rid of SSO. And now let's recompile it um, with Clang++. And we'll set the standard library equal to libc++ instead of GCC's libstudc++. And you can always check that with LDD. So we'll do LDD on our executable. And you see it's linked against libc++ if you were to go ahead and get rid of um, this standard lib at the very end and do LDD again, we would see lib std C++ or I see it on my machine. Okay, so let's compile it again with lib C++ and we see a different story here. So now we see our string object has changed size. It's now 24 bytes instead of 32 bytes. And now we see for characters, uh, for, or for a number of characters zero up to 22, all of these get stored on the stack. So we have a whole lot more of in situ storage inside of our string object than with GCC. And then we see that you know anything after 22 uh, characters gets allocated on the heap. All right, so that's a little bit about you know how this kind of works and you know you know the way that the short string optimization functions in a couple different compilers. But you know why do we want to avoid something like a dynamic allocation? Is that really going to cause uh, a big performance difference? So let's go ahead and just benchmark. Um, well, we can go ahead and benchmark that using Google Benchmark. So we'll go ahead and open up um, this benchmark program. So here we've got our string bench. We're going to use input sizes from zero up to 32 characters. And then we've got a vector. I'm going to reserve space for 10,000 string objects. I'm doing this so we don't have to, we're not profiling the dynamic allocation of vector. Um, and then we go ahead and um, we'll just in place back a whole bunch of strings of you know that particular size. So we're for each of our benchmarks, we're just emplacing back you know ten thousand string objects of different sizes, right? Uh, one for each of our little benchmark inputs. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's compile benchmark um, with O3 optimizations on, and let's go ahead and see what happens here. So we should see that you know basically for a string size of zero 
up to you know 15 for GCC, we shouldn't see much of a difference. And we see fairly consistent results here. Somewhere between 0.404 and somewhere between you know 0.427, you know, fairly consistent results. But we see a big change once we get past 15, right? A, a pretty significant change. So we go from like 0.43 up to you know 0 0.66 0 0.619 etc so these might be a little bit noisy you know compared to if you run these in isolation it will be different on different pieces of hardware um, especially because i've got obs running at the same time so that'll cause a little bit of interference here but you can definitely tell that there's a significant difference between strings of size 15 uh, and fewer um, and strings greater than 15 right there's a significant gap between the two and we can narrow in on that gap by using, say, benchmark filter, right? And we can go ahead and just run, you know, the one for 15. And we can go ahead and also uh, set benchmark min time. So if we want to run this benchmark for longer, let's say run it for three seconds instead of whatever Google benchmark thought was enough time. We'll go ahead and try it with 15 first. That way we can get a more representative um, uh, number for, you know, that profiling. So about 0.353. Now, if we increase it just by one, just where it's just out of the uh, small buffer optimization or short string optimization, you see it goes from 0.353 to almost double the time, 0.627. Right. So this is why we care about things like the short uh, short buffer optimizations or small buffer optimizations. You know, avoiding dynamic allocations, especially when you're working with you know, a lot of strings, it can be incredibly useful if you're just storing it on the stack instead of the heap. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. It's a simple introduction to the small buffer optimization with an example of how it's used inside of uh, implementations of the C++ standard library. If you want to take a look at any of this code or the code from any of my other series, go ahead and check it out at github.com slash coffee before arch. Um, if you have any questions about anything else, always feel free to, you know, contact me or with any requests. But as always, I'm Nick. And I hope you have a nice day.